Hi, I'm Emily from the Pencil Room Online and welcome to this lesson. Today we are going to tackle proportion. So what is proportion? When it comes to drawing, um, when we're talking about proportion, we're talking about getting what we see in front of us down onto our piece of paper with the right height and width, basically. There's other things we can measure as well, but that's what we want to start with, is the width and the height of the object and getting them correct in relation to each other. Why do we need proportion? Well, obviously, um, the aim of learning to draw for most people is to be able to draw realistically, and proportion is a big part of that. In the last lesson, we drew some objects, and we were using three-dimensional shapes, and you might have found that you could get a good sense of volume and uh, three dimensions in your drawing, but maybe they were a little bit out of whack. They might have been too skinny or too tall, and uh, that's what we're going to be focusing on today, is how do we get those accurate proportions from our subject down onto our piece of paper. So you can draw along with me. You'll need a sketchbook. You'll need um, a pencil, any pencil really, and an eraser. And it'll also be good to have a straight edge. So I'm just using this. It's a lid of a wooden pencil case. And um, ideally, I'd prefer you didn't use a ruler. The reason being, when we talk about width and height, when we try to find the width and the height in our subject, we are not thinking about centimeters or inches. And you might find that if you're using a ruler, you get caught up in that idea of how long or how short something should be in centimeters or inches. So if you can just find something that's firm and has a straight edge, uh, that will be ideal. So if we're not using centimeters or inches, how are we actually going to be measuring our subject? Well, it's all about comparison. We're comparing the width to the height in the first instance. And we're thinking about which one's longer and how much longer or shorter is it. So take a look at this cylinder here. Our goal for the first exercise is going to be drawing this cylinder in the same proportions on our piece of paper. Now, it doesn't mean exactly the same size. We could do that. We could draw a line across here and a line across here, line everything up and draw a cylinder and have the correct proportions. But that's not very realistic when it comes to drawing something that is in real life in front of you. We want to be able to scale it up or down. We want to be able to decide how big our drawing is going to be. So what we need to, do to find out is the width of the object and how that compares to the height of the object. To make this easier, I'm going to actually start by putting a rectangle around this here. So you don't need to draw anything yet. But this just means we don't have to worry about those curved parts. And we can easily see the, the width. And I'm also going to put a um, line down the center as well. Okay, so here's our height. Here's our width. And I think it's a good idea to start with the width along the, the bottom of an object. You can imagine maybe this is um, something like what we were drawing in the last lesson. It could be, you know, a bottle or it could be a, a can or something like that. So here's the width along here. Height goes from there to there. Now, the way I'm going to compare these is I'm going to use my pencil. And I'm going to use my pencil as a kind of a measuring tool. So I'm lining up the end of my pencil with one end of the width. And then I'm going to slide the fingers on this hand up to meet the other end of the width. So now I've got this here, and that's representing the width of this particular object. And I'm going to take that width and I'm going to see how many times it fits into the height. I just have to turn my page a bit here. So I've got one, and then I can just use my fingernail here to hold that place and then bring this up again. And it fits about two times. There is a small degree of error when you're doing this because um, obviously, you know, depending on how close you have your finger to the mark and then whether you transfer it accurately here, you might be a little bit out. Sometimes we do kind of have to make just a little bit of a guess, but with this one, let's do it again. This is my width and I'm seeing how many times it fits into the height. I'm going to say it fits two times into the height. So what we figured out is the width of this object, width, uh, fits two times into the height. Um, so let's actually put this this way. Height equals width times two. Hopefully that makes sense. So here's the width. 
fits two times into the height. The height is two times the length of the width. Okay, I know there's numbers and things and sometimes that can get a little bit confusing. Let's go ahead and draw this and I want you to draw this with me. You're going to draw the exact same cylinder. It might be bigger or smaller than mine, but it's going to be the same proportions. When you first start doing this, you might be thinking, well, how big do I make it? You make it as big as you want. It depends on how big your page is, depends on um, how big you want the drawing to be. So I'm just going to make a, a line here. Make mine a little bit bigger than this one. Um, and then I'm going to make a line here. So I'm just kind of taking a guess at this stage. Try and get that straight. Now I need to decide how wide the cylinder is going to be. Let's uh, make it this wide. You choose, doesn't really matter. And what I know from my deductions here is that the height needs to be two times the length of the width. So I can take this width, I'm not taking it off here, I'm taking it off my drawing, and take that width and just make sure that the height is two times that. One, two, and I made a pretty good guess at the start. Um, but you might find you have to adjust this line. So here's the width, the height is one, two times the width. We can draw the top of the rectangle. You can use a, a ruler here or your straight edge if you want to. It's good to practice drawing straight lines. And draw quite light. I'll just darken these up so you can see what I'm doing. So now I've got the overall shape down on the paper, I've got this rectangle shape. I need to figure out where the top of this ellipse and the bottom of this lip ellipse occur. And to do that I'm going to use the same technique. I'm going to take a measurement and then I'm going to compare it to this space and this space. And it's always a good idea to stick to your first unit of measurement. So the first thing I measured was the width. If we stick to that, it means we are going to have less degrees of error. So let's take this width measurement again. Here it is here from here to my finger or my thumb. You can use whichever or you can use both. I'm just going to turn this around and I'm going to compare that width of the cylinder to the length of this opening. And what do you think? I think it's probably half. So this opening here is half of this width. So now we need to make sure that in our drawing, the opening that we put in, the height of it is half of this width. You can take a guess if you want to, but I'm just going to take my width measurement here again, turn my pencil around, my page around, find halfway. Sometimes you do have to sort of just take a bit of a guess and things could be a little bit out, but this is the best tool we've got if we want to be able to you know scale things up and down and then we can I'm going to do it again from the width here do the same for the top find halfway and these should be the same let's just double check that actually I'm going to take this measurement here and just check that it is the same yep it's exactly the same so now we know where those ellipses should come down to or up to. And we can draw those in. Remember when you're drawing these ellipses, see if you can get a nice rhythm going. If you find that a little bit too difficult, then you could find the center point on each side and just very gently figure it out that way. Now you do need to be careful you don't end up with a point on this side so it's always a curve where you've put that dot. We could do the same here. Make sure there's a curve. And then we can draw in, sketch in the rest of the cylinder. We 
can rub out the lines that we don't need. So now what we have and what you should have at home is a cylinder that is not the same size as the original, but it's the same proportions. The width and the height have the same relationship in the drawing as they do in the original. Now let's just very quickly do one more here and this time I'm going to make it smaller. So remember what we figured out, the height is two times the width. Now if I do a really small one here, there are a couple of ways that you can start when you're measuring proportion. You can be quite technical like we were with this one where we make a whole lot of marks and straight lines first or you can just start with a really loose gesture drawing and to keep it really light because it may need to change so if that's easier for you you know, just start with that that drawing if you're not um, you know really technically minded and I'm not really technically minded I prefer to get something on the page you can just start with the drawing first and then we can go through and just check now this is getting quite small so I apologize if it's a bit hard to see, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the width and I'm taking the width across the bottom here. And I'm going to make sure the height is two times the width. If it's not, I'm going to need to make some adjustments. So here's the width. So you go ahead and draw another one as well. And here's the height. And I actually did pretty good, I think. Uh, I was hoping I'd be able to edit it for you and show you, but you know, let's say for example I, I uh, drew my first cylinder like this. I'm going to take the width, I'm going to take, um, I'm going to place that along the height here. And I can see my cylinder's too tall, so that's where I just have to make a mark here. This is two times the width, and then I need to make some adjustments. So go ahead and draw another cylinder, a different size to the first one, using these proportions. The height is two times the width, and the opening of each ellipse is half of the width. So this is where I need to, to uh, check my drawing again. Here's the width. This opening needs to be half. When you get down to these little small degrees, it can be a little bit tricky. Just do your best, and then this one should be the same. So maybe it needs to come down just a little bit. So now I have two cylinders. They're the exact same cylinder. One is bigger, one is smaller. The relative proportions are the same in both drawings. Okay, if you're feeling okay with that, we're going to move on to an actual object. So I've actually got two objects here. We're going to start with one and then we will bring the second one in because there are two different ways that you can use proportion. You can use it, use it to get the accurate measurements within one object or you can use it to compare one object to another object and make sure they are in the correct proportions in relation to each other. So I've got a black and white copy here. What I want to show you first is how if you do have a copy of your subject or a photograph, you can go through and, and make these um, these judgments about the, the proportions first. It doesn't mean you have to draw on your photograph, but I'm just going to draw on here so you know what I'm measuring. So here's the width, and then here's the height, and I'm going to figure out the relationship between the two of them. So take the width, and I'm going to see how many times it fits into the height. Width fits one, doesn't fit two times, fits one and I'd say, let's say one and three quarters. I'll just double check that. So take this here. Sorry about turning my page. It's just to be able to lay this pencil flat. One. So if it's one and yeah, I'm going to say three quarters. So the height equals one and three quarters three quarters times the width 
If you find it difficult with your pencil, what you can do is find a straight edge or even find a, a piece of paper and do it this way. So I could take this, it's the width, and I'm going to make a little mark there. That's the width, and I can compare that. So there's one. Here's the top here, and yeah, I'd say that it's it's maybe slightly under three quarters, but um, you know, at some point you've got to make a, a decision that's easy to understand. So I'm going to say one and three quarters. There's a couple of other things we need to measure here. We've got the height, but we haven't got the width along the top, and this is where it may get a little bit tricky because we've got to try and keep things centered. But let's take this width again. She might do it with a piece of paper. So here's the width. Now here would be halfway, and this is a little bit too tricky to name. So I'm going to say that the width along the top is one and a little bit less than a half of the width along the bottom. So I hope that doesn't get too confusing. Um, but it doesn't fit quite as nicely as our cylinder did. So let's try that again. Here's one width. So one width of the bottom would fit to about there. And then here would be halfway. It's a little bit less than that. So this one here is one and say um, one and a half. And it's going to put a little uh, less sign there to remi remind me that it's a little bit less than one and a half. So let's go ahead and just put the widths and the height onto our piece of paper. How big does your drawing need to be? How long is the first line that you put down on your piece of paper? That's up to you. You can decide how big or how small this drawing is going to be. So I'm going to put a line here. This is going to be the base. And let's say I want to make it this tall. It's always good to sort of figure out how it's going to fit on your page first. Here's a center line down the middle. Here's the top. So I'm taking a guess. If you want to, you could actually draw the cup in, but I'm just going to keep it like this for now. And I'm going to make a decision about how wide my cup is going to be, based on how big I want my drawing to be. And now I'm going to make sure that the height is one and three quarters the length of the width. So here's the width. One. So you see I've made mine way too tall. One and three quarters would be about here. So that's where the top of my cup should be. Get rid of this one. Now we need to make sure we've got the width correct along the top and I'm going to take a guess. I'm looking at these angles, thinking about um, what sort of angle they're on. We can actually measure that with our pencil as well. So we could take a straight line here and then just tilt and see what that tilt is. So maybe, um, maybe it's 10 degrees or so. Um, or you can just look at this shape outside it. So there's a triangle shape there and try and get the same sort of shape here. So I'm just putting them in really lightly because I may need to change them. But now I've got two end points to this top edge. I can make sure that the top edge is one and a little bit less than a half of this bottom edge. So I'm never taking a measurement from here and bringing it over here. I'm only thinking about how does this compare to this? And then in my drawing, how does this compare to this? Let's take this one, one, and mine's about one and a half, so I, that tells me that I need to come in just a little bit. Let's make it to about there, and I'm going to try the same thing. Remember, you can use a piece of paper if you find that more accurate. I just find it easy to use a pencil because you've always got the pencil in your hand. One, and... That would be a half, so yeah, it's a little bit less. So that's probably about right there. 
and then we can go ahead and join up these two points. And maybe add the, the bottom ellipse in here. You could draw the whole thing if you want to, or just the front edge. And then this one here, a little bit closer to our eye level, you can't see quite as much of a curve, but there would be maybe just a very slight curve in there. And you could put a few details in. So that's our cup. Now we're going to add in this second object here. I'm going to change up this second part of the video a little bit to make it a bit more interactive. Instead of you watching me draw, I'm going to ask you the questions that we need to answer to get the second object done on paper in the same drawing. If you're working on a larger screen, you can pause the video and work out the answer to each question by comparing measurements on your screen. Just use a pencil like I've been using or a piece of paper, or even use the length of your fingers and, and mark out measurements that way. If you can't do that, don't worry, just watch, try to work out the answer, and then I will show you the answer, and you can put it into your drawing. The first thing we need to figure out is where to place the bowl in our drawing. So here's the first question. Are the bottoms of both objects sitting on the same level? You can draw a straight horizontal line from the bottom of the first object to see if they are level. See how the base of the bowl is just slightly higher than this line. Mark this out on your drawing. Question two, how far away from the cup is the bowl and how can you measure it? You guessed it, we'll go back to our first unit of measurement. Take the unit of measurement and we'll see how many times it fits between the base of the cup and the base of the bowl. It fits one and a quarter times. Now you can draw a line to represent the base of the bowl. And remember, it's slightly above the level of the cup. Now we don't know how wide the base of the bowl is yet. So that's our next question. How wide is the base of the bowl? Compare our unit measurement to the base of the bowl, and the answer we get is three quarters. The base of the bowl is three quarters the length of the base of the cup. Next question, how tall is the bowl? Start by drawing a center line for how tall you think the bowl is. Now measure the height in the photo using the unit of measurement, that is the base of the cup. The height of the bowl is one and one quarter times the base of the cup. And you can also check the height by drawing a straight horizontal line to see where the top of the bowl intersects on the cup and it looks like it intersects about three quarters of the way up the cup. Next question, how wide is the top of the bowl? First, take a guess by drawing in the top of the bowl and make sure it's centered. Then measure the top of the bowl in the photo compared to the base of the cup. And you can see that the answer is one and three quarters. Now you can draw in a shallow ellipse for the top of the bowl. Now we've got the general size of the bowl down on the page. The next thing we need to add in is the curve of the sides. What angles are the sides of the bowl at? So if you remember, there are two ways that you might want to measure the angles that you can see. You could think about a clock face and that might give you an idea or the way I use is to think about the degree of the angle compared to a horizontal line or a vertical line, or maybe both. So create a right angle and then decide what degree the angle of the curve is at. And I'd say this angle here is just less than 45 degrees. And do the same with this top angle as well. See if you can work out the top angle for yourself. You can also think about the triangle shape that is created by the angle and a vertical line. And then you're going to repeat that on the opposite side. We're just about finished. The last thing to check is how wide is the opening of the bowl. And this one's a little bit tricky to measure because it's so small. You can do it by comparing it to the unit of measurement, or you could just eyeball it and make sure it's a very narrow ellipse. Now that you've got everything down on the page, you can refine your drawing. Curve off those angles on the side of the bowl, have a look at the 3D shape, 
using your ellipses and then add in any details like the lip around the top edge of the bowl. And then have a look to see if yours looks a little bit like mine. It's by no means a finished drawing, it's really just the start of a drawing, but it's got some solid proportion. The cup and the bowl are in proportion within themselves and also in proportion to each other. So I hope that has helped to uh, clarify how you would go about getting accurate proportions in your drawing. We've really just looked at, at the basics of proportion. You can take it as far as you want, but uh, the, the, the main things you need are the width and the height, and you don't need to know how long they are in centimeters or inches. You just need to be able to see them, and you need to be able to compare them. So you need to have a pencil or something that you can use. Take the measurement of the width or the base is what I usually start with, and then uh, mark that with your fingers and compare that to the height. How many times does the width fit into the height? Come up with some kind of fraction, it might be one and a half times, it might be two times, and then make sure that same relationship between the width and the height is reflected in your drawing. If you do want to have a go at drawing from life, um, you could look up some videos on sighting. I don't have a video on it just yet, but I'll keep that in mind to do one. And uh, it's essentially the same idea. You're using the top of your pencil and your thumb to make a measurement of, say, the width of something. You'll need to close one eye to be able to line your pencil up with whatever you're looking at. And then you're going to take that width and you're going to see how many times it fits into the height of what you're drawing. I haven't got a specific project for you this week, but what I'd recommend is just finding some um, photographs or taking some photographs of simple objects and have a go at doing what we've just done, comparing the width and the height in the subject and then drawing that just in a very simple form the way we've done and um, trying to get those correct proportions down on the page.